Hello and welcome to episode number 41 of the Hobbies and Happiness podcast where we talk all about the hobby that makes us happy, tabletop gaming. I'm your host Dan. And I'm Jim. And today we're talking about why cards get banned. All right. So welcome back everybody. Welcome back to the show. Jim, how you doing man? How you doing? Pretty good? Tired. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's the start of a new <laughs> week, I tell you. And, uh. I was just at the dentist today, and uh, you know the the doctor comes in. He's like, "Hey, uh, how you doing?" I'm like, "Well, it's Monday, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing as well as I could be, I guess." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, just, it's one of those weeks already. What happened? Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh, okay. It's because it's so cold. It's so cold today. We the weather. <laughs> We've been having some bipolar weather. <laughs> seriously, I was just in shorts yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. Was just it was in like, shorts. Fifty five or something. It was seventy. It was, it was seventy. It was in the seventies. It was <laughs> okay. No wonder it was so warm. Yeah. <laughs> seriously, so we went to the zoo with some friends, and we're like, "I'm in shorts. We're having a good time." Yeah. And then I'm like, "I am enjoying this because I know it's going to get yeah. cold again." Yeah. And yep. And not too long ago, it did the same thing. It was like a three-day mm-hmm. scale of like warming up, and then mm-hmm. they're like, "Here's a crazy snowstorm." Mm-hmm. And, like, we, right, and cool. we got and we got snow last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got <laughs> it's snow like, last oh night. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we are we're talking about why cards get banned today. Mm-hmm. Not so, the weather. Yeah, we're not talking about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's never a bad idea to talk yeah. about the weather because it's just crazy. So, but anyway, uh, so band cards. So today's conversation actually got sparked by a recent BNR announcement from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, mm-hmm. BNR stands for Banned and Restricted. Um, and so I thought it, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about why cards get banned in certain card games. Because, yep. I mean, if you're not in a competitive game or competitive format of a game, you probably don't know why, and, <laughs> you know. Um, so, and honestly, really, like we were just talking about, if you're if you play mostly cooperative living card games, right, then you prob you, you're probably unfamiliar with um, with why it happens. Um, mm-hmm. So, we wanted to kind of talk about that today. So, um, most of this discussion will be revolving around magic, uh, mostly because that's where we have the most um, experience. Jim has more experience in other games yeah. than I do. So I was my- going to say, I'll probably scale a little bit into Yu-Gi-Oh! Because some of this stuff can you know, yeah. go into that. Right. So one thing to keep in mind, um, so you know, I'll be speaking mostly about magic because it's what I know, but mm-hmm. you will have to think about it th- with a critical eye of... V- uh, of applying these concepts from game to game. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for example, Magic does their BNR announcements. They have BNR announcements basically every week, I think, and because sometimes they're just like, well, nothing, nothing today. Well, they were doing that for a while when uh, Pioneer came out because mm-hmm. they wanted to just be like, all right, we just want s- to see what everyone is playing, kind of fix mm-hmm. this format as fast as possible. Because they just started doing Pioneer a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so Pioneer is the newest format in mm-hmm. Magic. Um, and for, honestly, mo- all of these formats are competitive formats, right? Yeah. So, And honestly, um, that's another thing to keep in mind. You're really o- only going to be – you're only going to have these banned and restricted cards in formats that are competitive. Mm-hmm. Because there's really no need to have a banned and restricted list in a format that's not competitive. Like if you're playing Marvel Champions or Lord of the Rings where you're playing against the deck or like the cards from the game and not not a living opponent sitting on the other side of you, then that's real those questions really aren't gonna come up. Really. Um, now, if they have before, I'd be very interested <laughs> to know, because um, uh, that's not to say that it can't happen. Because yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sure it most likely can. It definitely can for sure. Um, but in in thinking about this, I always thought you really wouldn't have this happen in an <laughs> LCG. But in any case, uh, moving on. So so first, we want we want to define our terms here. Okay. So B and R banned and restricted. So. Um, again, in magic terms, ban 
and, and honestly, 99% of the time, ban, banning means it is not allowed at all. Mm-hmm. You cannot play the card in the format, mm-hmm. right? So in talking about Magic, they have different ban restricted lists for each format. Like for Command, well, Commander's its own separate thing, but still you have Commander, you have Standard, Modern, every different format. Each list looks completely different. Mm-hmm. And then Restricted, Restricted means you can only have one copy of the card in the in your decks, okay. Um, so now, how does Yu-Gi-Oh handle that? Because uh, you were saying yeah. it's a little different there. Yeah. So for Yu-Gi-Oh, it's it's called Forbidden List is okay. is really what it is, but it's just called the ban list. Mm-hmm. So uh, they do have banned cards that are just completely outright, completely gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the limited list as well, which is pretty much restricted. It gets sent down to one. And then they're semi-limited, which is reduced down to two copies. And okay. for Yu-Gi-Oh, the max copy count is three. Okay. So for Magic, um, the vintage format is the only format that I'm aware of that uses a restricted list. Okay? Yeah, I believe so. Now, one other thing that I just thought about that you also want to look at is, like, what what are the deck building requirements for these games, right? So, like, for Magic, normally you can have... I think just about in every format, you can have, outside of Commander, you can have four copies of one card. Four copies max of a single card. So four cards, four copies of one card is a play set. Yeah. Um, Normally. There are five cards that we can think of that get yes, around that rule, but right. that's a... But I don't think... That's different. I, I'm, on, I'm not aware if there are legitimate competitive decks that run those cards. Like uh, we're thinking, uh, like Shadowborn Apostles. Yeah, not for the normal um, formats. Yeah, like modern, standard, yeah. and anything. Because yeah. I, I, th- uh, there is a card in standard that has, I, I believe, yeah, because it was in Adventures of Forgotten Realms, I think. That was a dragon one. Uh, that was Strixhaven. Was that Strixhaven? I think that, and I believe that, yeah, Dragon's Approach. Dragon's I believe Approach. that that got rotated out. Oh, it did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not sure if there's any cards in, currently in Standard for Magic that have that, uh, not restriction, but um, text that says you can have any yeah. number of copies in your deck. <laughs> added effect. The added blue copies. one, there's a blue one. I can't remember the name of the card, but it, yeah. it's uh, it's a mill card. Mm-hmm. There were basically meme decks. <laughs> 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 in a lot of uh, in arena when that was legal in those formats I I'm hated not surprised playing. I played <laughs> I I played I played the decks and I played against them yep. I loved memeing people because it was hilarious and then when I went up against it I hated it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was fine if I was playing aggro mm-hmm. because I would just beat them down yeah because they're what two or three drops I think two uh ooh, I actually think there were three. Okay. It might be two. It might be two. Yeah. Be One two. of those. So then you just go fast. And it's you not like they fast. want to block with these creatures. Because no, no. that's how they're milling you out. I think they were one threes. Oh, okay. I think. I don't remember. I'll have to, I'll have to find it. <laughs> I, I wish I had it up right now. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, there, there is actually uh, decks inside of Pauper that mm-hmm. utilizes uh, the two rats. Well, one of the two rats. Mm-hmm. Relentless, or I think it's Relentless Rats. And then some other one. They get bigger depending on how many rats you have out on board. Mm -hmm. Uh, One is a three drop. The other one is a two drop. But he doesn't increase his toughness where the other one increases attack and toughness. Oh, okay. So they all just get bigger. Pack rats are rare, I believe. Uh, Pack rat's different. Yeah, pack rat is different. Yeah, that's like when you pay cost, discard, and then make a clone of this card, pack rats. I'd have to look, yeah. but it's, I believe it's, it it's something itself. similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, because I think you di- you have to discard. I believe you discard a card to its effect. Mm-hmm. I believe. Um, but I, I say all that to say you do need to look at like Pokemon, for example, is another is another one that's a little different too. Yeah, is how the decks are built with Pokemon mm-hmm. now because in Pokemon, do they have? Four copies of each card max, yeah. or is that three? Yeah, it's a uh, it's four. It copies. is four. Okay, yeah. and uh, there are specific cards that have like a star on them mm-hmm. or a, a prism diamond, mm-hmm. and those are only you can have one of. Okay, okay. Um, so it'll state on the card if you can have. It's either you can have four or you can only mm-hmm. have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so that that that's what we mean when we when we say banned, restricted. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, just make sure you understand what the terms mean. There is also a ban list for for Pokemon, though. 
Yes, yeah, yeah. there is. There yeah. is. I'm not sure what there what it is, but there's it tends to not really affect standard so much, but mm-hmm. expanded and then the the other older formats mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. What is that? What are those formats called? I I, I want to say one is also vintage. Uh, yeah, one is vintage, I believe, and then the other one is expanded. Uh, which goes back like five or six years mm-hmm. rather than two years mm-hmm. for standard. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't remember the other formats in Pokemon. If you play Pokemon, let us know because I, I, I'm honestly curious. I, I want to know if we've got Pokemon players that uh, watch the show. Um, mm-hmm. TCG um, or the, the games, the video games. I'm yeah. interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pokemon is just a fan, is a great game all around. Um, I, I really love the TCG, Pokemon TCG. It's a mm-hmm. lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. And again, that's another that's another one that's been around for a very long time yeah. and yeah. is doing really well. If you're a combo player in Magic, you're going to love oh, playing Pokemon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a deck that I have that, oh, we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do some Pokemon videos yeah, because oh yeah. man I I love it I love <laughs> it so much so much, um, all right, so so again this conversation was brought about by the March seventh BNR announcement okay mm-hmm. so we're 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 going to be kind of going in in depth a little bit kind of as we move through our outline here um so so you know we we want to get into it by base by starting with so these bands they can happen for really three key reasons okay um so we're going to go through kind of each of these here Mm -hmm. um so the first one that i kind of thought and these are in no particular order right but the first one is d- is due to a stale metagame, okay? So, you know, we have touched on before, like, what the metagame is, right? Um, if you're not familiar with what the metagame is, go check our check our past episodes where we've touched on um, just card games in general. And I know, I don't know, we might actually have an episode, an episode where we touched on a lot more in depth what the metagame is. Mm-hmm. Um, but essentially, right, what the metagame is, is and I, I when I was learning about this, I, I didn't like when people said this because it just got got me confused even more. But when you understand the concept, it, it makes sense. But it's the game within the game, right? So again, let's talk about magic, right? Magic is a game, okay? Mm-hmm. You are playing, right? Jim, you actually you before I finish this, you kind of explained it well when you were touching on. Oh, I don't remember. No apples, to apples to apples. <laughs> oh, okay. The whole okay. App, your yeah. your apples to apples description. Um, go into that for for a I, second. Again, I, I I don't remember. Well, playing that. the man. You're saying playing the man. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you pretty much play your judge to where it's like, okay, I have these cards in my hand, and I kind of know Dan's sense of humor, right? So I'm not gonna. I'm not going to use these other cards. I was about to say waste. I'm not about to waste these really good cards <laughs> on on Dan when yeah. I know the person to my left is going to love these other cards. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> That's that, and I think that is a really good analogy of what the meta game is, right? Mm-hmm. So if we if you go to your local game store for Commander Night, right, and you know that there's going to be six guys there mm-hmm. who are playing Commander, and you've played with these guys before, you know what decks that each of these guys are, are going to play. Yeah. So you know what the competition, <laughs> what the competition is as you walk into that store. If you know someone's going to be playing Gargos, let's say, <laughs> uh, or not Gargos, a uh, Golos. <laughs> you can say Gargos you, too, yeah. Yeah, Gargos as well, whatever. I'm going to play Is It and just yep. copy your effects, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, or you could play like Coma or mm-hmm. whatever, whatever deck you know that is really good against mm-hmm. stopping that one player. And honestly, like that's why I built Coma, mm-hmm. right? I built my built my Coma deck because there was a deck in our play group. Um, we've talked about it multiple. We've times. We've talked about it multiple times, but that is what the meta game is, right? You know what your competition is and what you're going to be going up against. Yeah. So you prepare for your competition accordingly, mm-hmm. right? So that's that's really what the meta game is. Um, it took me a really a while to understand what the concept was, but honestly, it, it really is pretty simple. It really is pretty simple. So, like, if you're going from standard to commander to modern, those are three separate meta games. Mm-hmm. And honestly, even playing commander, the meta game is going to be different. If you're playing at your kitchen table with some friends, you go to your LGS and you're playing in a <laughs> tournament there. Or you go to an SCG con and you play a, a tournament or whatever there. Yeah. That's three separate meta games, mm-hmm. right? 
It's just that concept distilled into one word, Mm -hmm. right? And that's why we have language. (laughs) There's also, so not so much that I've noticed in Magic versus other format or other games. Mm -hmm. So Yu-Gi-Oh! specifically, when cards get banned, a lot of people are upset, especially the ones that aren't playing meta decks, right? So if there's a really good card... So wait, you're saying they're they're upset if they're not playing the meta decks? So... So when the card gets banned, they'll be upset because they're not playing the deck that made that card get banned, essentially. Oh, I see. So I see. so then some will be like, I'm just still going to play it. So there are times I've versed friends of mine. Um, I want to put quotes around that so badly because I hate <laughs> when people do this. <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play this this Firewall Dragon or this uh, these other cards that got banned for a deck called Ice Barriers. And they play it. I'm like, you, you you can't do that. You can't play the card, man. And it's like it's like, but I'm not playing the meta deck. I'm like, but that's other decks can use that card. <laughs> like the card itself is also just extremely good, and I don't want to deal with it. So so that so I'm I pretty calling much, you out. So I pretty much kind of stopped playing card games with them i'll still talk to them and, oh, really? and talk about the card game <laughs> but or the game in general but it's like all right if i know you're planning on playing that deck the one that has the banned cards i'm like i'm gonna sit this one out <laughs> i'm good do i know these people uh i don't know well if it's for Oh, i don't think oh okay so. yeah okay all right yeah. All right. I, I, yeah i don't really have to worry about it so much with magic unless it's for commander and people are like yeah sure you can use the yeah most card. of the time with commander yeah i mean I mean, he, we still we still let Golos come to the table. So I don't know why we do. <laughs> Same. <laughs> he's like, oh, all right. The last time we played, he's like, no, guys, I changed up the deck list. <laughs> and I jokingly said, it's like, oh, did you change it up because now your commander's banned and it used to not be, right? And and we were all uh, laughing about it. And then it turns out that's literally the only reason it changed. The deck list was the it exact was the, same. And, and he even, like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, that's actually why it's different. But, but and then and then and then in the middle of that game, I, I, I was like, dude, you literally just said that the deck was different. You changed it. And he goes, I, guys, I, I was, was obviously <laughs> kidding. <laughs> You were not obviously kidding. No, we didn't really care at the time. Oh, man. But it we was We cared just, when he was about to win. <laughs> That's true. when we cared. <laughs> oh. oh, that was so much fun. Yeah. I love having commander nights. Yeah, that was fun. Oh. <laughs> Can't stop laughing. About All right, it. we're just gonna agree to never allow that deck <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, so anyway, stale metagames. <laughs> oh, right. We're talking about this. <laughs> we're, we're talking about metagames, yeah. So, um, okay, so stale metagames are boring to play. In. And honestly, like, mm-hmm. I even, I even, let, let's, let's, let's keep ta- on the train about our commander group, right? Mm-hmm. It is, it can be boring mm-hmm. to every time you show up to commander night, it's the same three decks or yeah. the same four decks, the same. That yeah. can be boring. Yeah. Because you kind of just know how things are going to play out. Right. Right, right, right. I mean, sure, the outcome can be different every time, mm-hmm. but it's like, all right, I know I have to worry about these X cards in this person's one deck. Mm-hmm. And honestly, right. that that's one of the exciting things about Commander, right? So Commander, with it being a 100-card singleton format, meaning you can only have maximum of one copy mm-hmm. of each card in your deck, right? Each time you play the deck, it's going to be a little bit different, mm-hmm. right? Um, and that's why I much prefer playing a more casual commander versus um, very competitive, ultra competitive commander. Because yeah. those those games they can be very quick, mm-hmm. and it's it's two, three, four card combos that they're trying to do to win the game. Yeah, and they're going to do it as fast as possible, right? That can be very boring, right? If if it's happening time and time and time again, right? Some people find that fun, and that's I'm not taking anything away from that, right? Yeah, but. Stale metagames, playing the same things over and over and over again, that, that's boring, right? So that can lead to bannings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so you look at – so in t- in times where there's going to be a banning because of a stale metagame, like the metagame is just not changing, like companies 
again, like Wizards, since we're talking about magic, will just decide to ban a card because this card seems to be the most prevalent among all the cards played. Yeah. And the metagame really has revolved around this one card. It may not necessarily be overpowered mm -hmm. or very powerful. It's just it's a significant card in and of itself to where the metagame really has just been built up all the way around it. Yeah. And one other thing I've noticed between Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic's ban list, mm -hmm. a lot of the time Magic will ban out that really powerful card, mm -hmm. right? Where Yu-Gi-Oh! sometimes doesn't ban out that extremely powerful card. Mm -hmm. They ban the cards that get you super easily to that one card. So it could be like, oh, this oh, one card is going to yeah. give me plus five cards in advantage, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it gets me to whatever card I really want. It's mm -hmm. like, sure, those other cards are ridiculously powerful, mm -hmm. but it's that one card that's the problem. It's yeah. like, I, I can play this one and I can now go off, mm -hmm. send things to the graveyard. Those ef effects activate. Right. I right. can now special summon it to the my side of the field. And, and now you're getting deck thinning on top of more cards on the field, mm -hmm. along with first turn going into ridiculously strong cards. Right, right, right. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! likes to get rid of those support cards that so they, really... So they don't get rid of the cards themselves? Oh, they still do. If, oh, it, they if do. it becomes a problem, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, but, if it's, but, but Wizards and Magic will just get rid of that one card, yeah, that yeah. problem card. Yeah, exactly. Because, again, they're just two completely different games mm -hmm. and how their right. uh, mechanics are structured. Right, right. Right. So, so go, going off of the stale metagame point, right? I, I have, I have written down like, so deck diversity, right? Is a good thing. It's a very good game. Mm -hmm. Good thing in card games, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, you know, th honestly, I think the term diversity gets thrown around all the time for different reasons or another, right? Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Whatever the case may be, it is a term that just, I think gets overused, mm -hmm. right? Um, but in this case, um, in talking about the metagame, right, and, and how it relates to card games, the diversity of decks really is a good thing, a good thing, right? What The biggest thing it points to is you ha the health of a format, right? If you have a lot of different decks that are competitive, that can win on any in any given match, mm -hmm. that is a surefire sign that your card game, your, the metagame, is is in a very, very good spot, yeah. okay? Yeah. If you have a tournament, and this has happened so many times, and very recently with Wizards and Magic, where you look at a tournament, uh, seven of the top eight decks, of uh, seven out of the decks in the top eight are the exact <laughs> same deck, right? Yeah. That's boring, yeah. right? So deck diversity is such a good thing when it comes to card games it keeps things very it keeps things exciting mm -hmm. right um and honestly it's very exciting watching a tournament or playing in a tournament when you don't know what to expect yeah. <laughs> there's so many different things like if you're prepping for a tournament and you know there's three there's three decks that you mm -hmm. really need to prepare for because in the met, the current meta is it's these three decks and that's it that's a lot easier to prep for mm -hmm. right than a tournament to where there's 12, 15 decks that are doing yeah. really hot in it's the gonna meta. It's going to be real difficult. Right. But it, it honestly, it's from a competitive standpoint, it's so it's fun. It's also terrible for a control player at that point <laughs> yep. as well. Correct. Because you're sure. like, oh, I have to worry about 12 different decks. But you play more, con you play more control than I do. Yeah. Isn't, isn't it easier to play control in a stale metagame? Oh, yeah, because yeah, you know you exactly know it, what you're going to be exactly, versing. It's like, exactly. all right, my sideboard is going to be specific, like five of these pieces yep. specifically for this, for this one deck, deck. Yep. and my main deck is yep. also going to be specifically for these two decks that I just need to worry about. And, and stale metagames really turn into counter-heavy metagames yeah. as well, yeah. and they turn into games that just take very long. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when... Um, in Dominaria standard when Teferi was running rampant. Yeah. It was just basically Teferi against Teferi <laughs> every other game. And it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, Teferi's a great card, but these matches, every match is an hour. Mm -hmm. Every single match is an hour. Yeah. And they time out before they're even done. Yeah. 
And same thing. So uh, you weren't playing at this time, but during the Kaladesh uh, Pro Tour and just the Kaladesh mm-hmm. meta in general, yeah. um, there was Boros Aggro with uh-huh. the Looter Scooter. Right? That was the that was the first deck that I played against <laughs> when I got into Magic. That was the first deck that I played against. And you know, Joey, if you're watching, man, you were the first one I played against. And you, or you know, I tell you that you were the second person I played against that night, and you were running that deck. Oh man. Yep, My, I remember uh, that. Brendan also let me borrow that deck when I was first getting into it. Okay. I was like raffle stomping everyone. Dude, it was such a good it, deck. It was. It's. <laughs> I didn't know it at the time because I I didn't know much about Magic. Yeah. But now, I mean, I know all those cards. Yeah. They're phenomenal. <laughs> I there were so many they were times so good. I would forget to do the looting effect on Smuggler's Copter, mm-hmm. and people would be like, "Do you want to do that effect?" I'm like. Oh, oh yeah! I forgot I can do that because my I've been playing at this point for like maybe a month. Oh yeah, and yeah, so I right. I'm still learning right. this right. game. Yes, and but I'm I'm going like either three zero or two and one at mm-hmm. locals, mm-hmm. brand new to this game. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't have to worry about anything it is that they're doing. I'm just like, all right, crew the smuggler's copter and go face, and then <laughs> yeah. just get in with all my other creatures as well. Yep. But the, so, well, speaking of smuggler's copter got banned. <laughs> yeah, smuggler's, smuggler's copter, copter got banned. Got <laughs> because of that deck, I believe. Yeah, it was yes. because of that, yeah. yeah. It was having so many uh, top uh, showings for tournaments. Uh-huh. and But during the Pro Tour, there were actually two control decks that made it to the finals. They were both extremely ready to be versing the Boros aggro mm. deck because the control list is only set up to be versing that one deck, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And when, when it got to the finals, it was Grixis control versus Jeskai control. I go back and still to this day and we'll watch this Pro Tour because it was amazing watching this gameplay. Mm-hmm. During during one of the, the games, they got to like turn 13 before they did anything it was just like land go land go land go control mirror matches even if they're separated by one color is is absurdly crazy to watch Mm -hmm. like it can be boring if you're not into the game right but if you're into the game you're like i'm i can't wait to see the value that they're about to get so okay so So that that goes goes to our second point here in a second. But the first thing I did want to say is, um, I think the deck diversity. We'll just call it deck diversity. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like that makes games, card games, more approachable and affordable. Yeah. Okay. When you have a wealth of options at your disposal when you just come into a game, right? And if you're looking to be competitive mm-hmm. and you want to get into compete and learn <clears throat> and just honestly just improve com- uh, on a competitive level than just more casual. If, if, if the deck diversity is high, again, just using that term, if that is high and there's a lot of different decks that you can play to be competitive, mm-hmm. you are much more apt to yeah. get in and play that game yeah. because I mean, let's just say that there's only two decks mm-hmm. that are being competitive. The supply versus demand. Right. And then if you're like, well, I don't really want to play that style of game, mm-hmm. then you're just not going to get in. Most of yeah. you know, that, 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 that is an option. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> that's, that's one thing that I did want to point out because the other thing too is the, the more, the, the more decks that there are also would make it more, more affordable as well. Um, just from the standpoint of thinking about it to where now you've got more options, just look at which the cheaper ones, mm-hmm. right? And then you could – you go to that one then if there's only two, well, they're both really expensive. Yeah. Now, if they're all competitive, chances are they're, they're all going to be on the pricier side um, because that's just how it works, yeah. <laughs> honestly. Um <laughs> In in these in these games, but you know, it is especially a, since multiple competitive players are going to now have these multiple, multiple decks. decks. Yeah, right, so right. It's not like they're only limiting themselves to one right, list. Right, right. Um, but what I, the the thing that I did want to also point out here is so companies and designers they are incentivized at maximizing the number of people interested in your game mm-hmm. and playing it, much less competing in it. Yeah, right. Because if people are not playing their game, that means people are not spending their money on your game, mm-hmm. and you are not getting that money to then make more cards, make the game better. Yeah. So you, so these companies are highly incentivized, especially if they have an OP system. And, and when I say OP, I mean an organized play system that they have to fund it, right? Mm-hmm. And if people aren't funding it by playing it and going to these events, 
then that game will die. Yeah. It will die. Which period. is partially why Magic moved to making more Commander products. They, I believe they completely got rid of the Planeswalker decks. Um, Did they? Yeah. Okay. Um, Nobody was so, buying those. Yeah, no, because it was like to get you into standard, but it didn't help you at all because oh, they, they were had, bad. Th- that's what they were for? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they were terrible. Yeah. They, so, were, not, they were not very Yeah, they, good. they were rough. Yeah. So then they completely scrapped that idea, which was like the best thing they could have done, yeah. and moved it over to Commander. Mm-hmm. So every single new set that drops, they come out with at least two Commander decks. I believe it's two. Yeah, for yeah, at at minimum two. Yeah, because mm-hmm. before that they were doing one commander set a year, a year. Yeah, right. And it wasn't really commander set; it was just the commander decks, is what yeah. is what yeah. it was, right? But now that they've done that, literally every single commander product that comes out, they make tons of money. So now we're getting at least five commander uh, sets before they were doing <laughs> that. Before they were doing that, right? I, I I was like, all right, well, there's here's the four commander decks for yeah. the year. I'm gonna buy all four of them. Yeah. Not doing that anymore <laughs> because there's so many. Yeah. There's so many now. It's what now twelve? Because the the eight plus the the four that come in as well. I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and if you're not a commander player. You should play Commander. Like, if you're in Magic, I just think you should. Um, I was actually thinking about this recently. Is I know it was a good idea for them to move the Planeswalker stuff to the Commander decks. Mm-hmm. But it's also, like, as playing these other formats, mm-hmm. it's like, man, they're, they're focusing a lot on Commander. Yeah, And they are. it's like, what's going on with these other formats? And, and people like, talk companies about, are... People talk about it all the time. Yeah, and, like, magic. getting rid of the competitive play stuff. They mm-hmm. got rid of pro players. They, mm-hmm. They're getting rid of a lot of stuff. And it's like, I really like those other formats. Mm-hmm. And a yeah, lot of people sure. do as well. For sure. So... And, that, and again, that's as a company, <clears throat> you got to figure out... You got to balance, like, what makes you money, but also what your players want. And yeah. that's a... That, that's the, that's the thing that literally every single company in existence of all time, they always have to figure out what's that balance. Yeah. Like we need to figure out what makes us money, but also what our base and our customers want, mm-hmm. right? So sometimes they get it wrong. Sometimes they get it right. <laughs> and no company is ever going to get it right 100% of the time. Especially if I hate the colors that they make for the commander <laughs> yeah. decks. I'm like, come on, <laughs> Gruel, get out, of, get out of my face. I love Gruel. <laughs> I shouldn't say I love Gruel. I like it. I like Gruel. I don't love it. I enjoy it sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I yeah yeah. Gruel's okay. Gruel, I'll just yeah. say it's okay. All it, right. It's a so thing. so 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 the next point. So the first thing we talked about was of why bans can happen is due to stale metagame. Okay. Yeah. The second one kind of goes off of it a little bit, um, but it's meta warping. Right. So if there are cards that completely change and alter and shift an entire format, those cards are most likely to get banned. Mm -hmm. Um, And we'll talk, and there's another one that I just thought about that's not on here that we'll definitely talk about too. Um, But again, this is still kind of goes along with that first point where it's, it, it's the, how it affects the meta, how it affects the meta game. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is the companion mechanic. Okay, so today, um, yeah, as we're recording this, it's it's March seventh. So today was that BNR announcement from Wizards. Okay, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so the big thing that was on that BNR is Loris of the Dream Den is banned in Pioneer, and it is also banned in Modern. Okay, so if you're not familiar, I'll go ahead and read Loris. So Loris of the Dream Den is a three <clears throat> three cost. Legendary creature, Cat Nightmare. One Orzov, Orzov, and it has Companion. Each permanent card in your decks, in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. So the interesting thing with that, with the Companion mechanic, was it, it was introduced in Ikoria. Um, mm-hmm. It was essentially it was a deck building uh, restriction, okay? <clears throat> so for Luris, your deck, has, the restriction for your deck was each permanent card in your deck had to have a uh, CMC. It's not, it's mana, it's mana value. Now yeah. the permanence of your, of your, the mana value of your permanent had to be two, two which is less. important, which is important. Yes. <laughs> so it's a three, two with lifelink and said during each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with, com- 
with mana value two or less from your graveyard. This uh, is not up to date. No, that's all right. <laughs> this is not up. <laughs> but okay, so that that was the card. Okay, so this card when it was released, <laughs> they had to re- completely redo wh- how they designed yeah. the companion mechanic. Okay, yeah. because the way companion was originally designed, okay, was it started. In in the companion zone, right? Yeah. So it's like Commander where you had access to it right away, mm-hmm. okay? It, was, it would take up a slot in the side deck. In your sideboard. Yeah. 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 So it, it basically acted as if it was in your hand, mm-hmm. and you could cast it at any time you could cast that card, yeah. right? Which all companions were permanents, so mm-hmm. you could only cast them at Sorcerer Speed unless they had Flash, which some of them did, and we'll yeah. talk about one of them. Um, so it was always in your hand and it couldn't be touched. Yeah. So like if your opponent had a card that allowed them to look at your hand and then make you discard a card, they couldn't make you discard that. Yeah. So Luris was everywhere. Yeah. Um, was, was the cat deck in standard at the time I Corey came out or was that after I'm trying to remember if the cat deck. Yeah. Uh, of the cat oven. Oh, uh, that was... Was that after? Eldrain? Yeah, Eldrain. I can't remember if so, Eldrain yeah. was before or after Ikoria. I cannot uh, remember. I, oh, because yeah, for, I standard, remember. for standard, for <laughs> standard, Loris was the companion in that day. Yeah. I yeah. think, if I if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. <clears throat> but Loris, Loris 100% was the card that made them change how the companion mechanic worked. Loris and Yorian, both of them were... Those were the two biggest ones. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I think... But Yorian didn't get banned. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, Luris was the one that got banned. Yeah. Right. And Luris got banned pretty quickly. Yeah. It got banned in Vintage. Yeah. R- like, right away. Uh, limit. If, what it, oh. I oh, thought it got banned in Vintage. Yeah, it would It would have had to have been banned. I'm pretty sure it got banned in Vintage Yeah, right because away. they put it to one, but, like, you're only running one anyway. <laughs> right, so. exactly, exactly. <laughs> right. Because yeah, in a lot in a lot of these standard decks, right, they had their Luris in the no, because you couldn't have Luris in your as your companion and put him in your deck, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, so it was that's either, the only good thing about yes, what they did with right, him, right? That'd be that would have been crazy. <laughs> Missed out on everything else. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been crazy if they made him. But too there were some fancy. decks that were just playing three in the main board. Yes, there were. Yeah, correct. Because it was like, all right, well, I mean, the card's way too good. So I mean, when I was playing standard, of course I played it because mm-hmm. I mean, if you're in, if if you're in black, you were most likely. Yeah playing yeah that like if you're playing that style you're 100 mm-hmm. playing loris yeah. because why not yeah i believe wasn't there mono black aggro at that time or was, was that pioneer i forget there was the, well yeah, regardless mono, it was both mono, yeah mono i remember that mono black mm-hmm. aggro list mm-hmm. in in standard yes yeah um so loris completely loris was a part of the reason that completely changed yeah. the mechanic. So they they changed how the companion mechanic worked. Mm-hmm. So they made it to where instead of you being able to cast it directly from the companion zone, you had to pay three mana to then put that card into your hand. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you could only do that at sorcery speed. Yeah. So then you were able to cast that card um, with normal timing restrictions. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you think about that. They had already printed all of these cards – that had because they tried to explain how companion worked. <laughs> in, a lot of on people are confused at mm-hmm. this because they like in, in Scryfall, the one that I'm looking at. Yeah. They say if this card is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. But the the errata text is if this card is your chosen companion, you may put it into your hand from outside the game for three colorless mana anytime you could cast a sorcerer. Which I don't believe that they reprinted them to be, or, yeah, to even put the text on them for the uh, pay three to get it into your hand. Yeah, that's just a complete side thing. Right. So. But if, like, if they were... See, again, I don't know, because I'd be very interested to know how the printing of these cards work. Do they just print how much they're going to print before the set releases and then send them where they're going to send them for sale Mm. and then just not print them again unless unless the individual cards come up for a reprint? Mm. Or do they have like – do they do print runs? I would – 
I would assume not. I would assume they do one print run and they print how much they're going to print like for the set and that's it. They're not going to reprint. From from what I hear, they they'll they'll keep printing cards if they're like in standard. From what I from what I believe. Oh, so they'll they'll keep printing boxes, printing cards for boxes up, up to a certain point, I'm assuming. If oh, it's like Yeah. Yeah, if it's like a few months before it gets rotated, then they probably wouldn't. But for so, okay, so cuz normally cards are in standard for a year, right? Uh 2 years. Oh, that's right, 2 years. Yeah. My bad. 2 years. So, in this case, right, cuz Companion changed immediately upon release. Okay. I don't think I don't. It was actually it was about a month. Yeah, I want to say it was about, about a, a month. month. It was about a month. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it took about a month for them to change it. Yeah. Because I remember when it happened, the the talk in the community at the time was this should have happened sooner. Why did this not happen sooner? Why yeah. did we wait a full month? Um. But in, in any case, I do remember it was it was about a month after. Mm-hmm. So in this case, so it happened a month after, right? So now, are they if if they are printing the cards up to you know uh, however certain months before yeah, yeah. it gets banned do they then change how it's printed do they make a call to the print again i don't yeah. know i don't know the operation i don't know how it works but do they then change it going forward then probably not just because they have the order in or something it, it could be that and it's also just of how long they've already been in the process of getting these cards together that's true cuz i cuz i know it's a long process yeah. these the the amount of time it takes to design and then get them to mm-hmm. the printers and then printing and packaging. They say for the challenger decks, it takes about a year for from when like their big That's tournament true. takes point mm-hmm. to see what decks are doing well to when they come out. That's true. That's true. Because we'll talk about this in, in, towards the end of the episode. Um, the like physical card games yeah. and how this affects them versus yeah. digital. Um, but yeah. So I'd be we can very, talk about Luris all day. <laughs> I'd be very interested to see like if there are printed copies of Luris that have the new errata uh, companion text on it. Mm. Um, but again, like if you're playing the game, you know how the card's going to work. Yeah. Right. If you're playing competitively or <laughs> Correct. someone you know is playing competitively, yeah. they you're going to you're going to know how the yeah. card's going to work. Yeah. So that's that's never the issue. It's more of we're curious. Like yeah. I'd be very interested to know because you know we. Because we talk about like rules, right, and and knowing how to play these cards. Mm-hmm. We talk about villainous like all the time because yeah. we're not sure. We look at what's printed. We're like, well, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I really, I should be able to look at the card and know what it does, yeah. right? But you know, the, again, with the power of the internet, it's so easy to know the rules, yeah. right? Um, but it's 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 an interest. It's an interesting thing, right? So you know, so. Going off of Laura, so we were talking about this on on our Discord today, right? Which, if you're not a part of our Discord community, go check it out. There's a link in the description. In all these descriptions, go join our Discord um, where we chat about pretty much everything. We were talking about a lot of stuff today. We were talking about a lot of stuff today, for (laughs) sure. Um, Jim and I are pretty much always in that Discord. (laughs) I've pretty much always got it open um, just to chat with anybody with whatever you want to talk about. So Mm -hmm. if you're not in part of our Discord, go hop on, check that out. Um, but one thing that somebody had said, this is, it, I thought it was very interesting, right? Um, so I think Luris is the only one that actually hurts the format. Yorion is an actual deck building restriction. Mm-hmm. So Yorion, before we talk about that, Yorion is another companion, um, that was printed in Ikoria three. What is that? Azorius? Azorius? There we go. Yeah. Um, so flying is a 4-5 flyer with when Yorion ETBs you exile any number of non-lane permanent you own and control, return those cards to the battlefield at the, at the beginning of the next end step. But his deck building restriction was your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. So if you're playing standard, your deck had to include... 80 cards. 80 cards, yeah. 80 cards, which was which is a lot of cards. Right? Yeah. But in those colors, <laughs> Yorion is going to be played in a control <laughs> shell, right? So, okay. <laughs> like, that's really... So, so this my thing, <laughs> my thing is, Laura still is a deck building restriction. So, <laughs> I... Of. Okay, but here's the thing. So, I don't think you can say Yorion is the only... Of the two, Luris and Yorion, Yorion is the only one that is a restriction. 
I mean, Lurus- technically, I mean, yes, it's a restriction because you can't use higher than two mana cost. Permanence, right? Yeah, permanence, right. yeah. Right. So, but what's the but? But there's a lot of really good cards in one yes, and two. Correct. <laughs> yes, there are. Right. Especially in a faster format. Right. It's great. So I think I think the point was, and if this is the point, then yes, I agree with it, is all of the good cards, for the most part in those formats, all the good cards cost zero, one, or two. Right. And so those are the good cards. You're not going to not play the good cards. Yeah. Right. So in that sense, if all the good cards cost zero, one, and two, you're going to play the good cards. So there, therefore, it's not really a restriction mm-hmm. when it's not – when it's – the lim, the limitation is on cards that you're not playing anyway. Yeah. So in that <laughs> sense, yes. Th- that sense, yes, I'd agree mm-hmm. that it's not really much of a, stri- of a restriction, which I think that was the point. There, there actually was a lot of decks that changed just to fit Luris into the list. Yeah. There was Jund in Modern, which isn't <laughs> playing any of the three drops yep. anymore, and that's and that's a mid-range list. You're looking to outvalue them around the three mana point mark as well. So you're looking for, you got your one and two drops, but then you also have Liliana of the Veil, which is going to take you into outvaluing them towards the end, uh, middle and late game. Yeah. And you, now you don't get to, then you didn't get to play her anymore. Yeah. So, so there's this one person that I've got, he's made some other comments that I do want to talk about. Um, because again, join our discord. We have these conversations <laughs> and these are, these are actually good. These are good points that I kind of want to touch on here. Does his name start with an A? Yep. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so the, the next thing he said, um, cause we then started talking about Raghavan. Okay. And I need to pull it up again. Is it Ragavan or Ragavan? Rag, whatever it Honestly, is. Honestly, I've never I, heard Ragavan, but that actually sounds pretty dope. I th- I think it's Ragavan. I don't know. I don't um, know. I do not know. So Ragavan, whatever, is one mana, right? So one red. Oh, dude, so good. He, he's so good. He's so when he good. when when Ragavan <sighs> deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library until end of turn. You may cast that card. And then it has dash for one and a red. That is, you may cast this card for its dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and it's returned from the battlefield to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's a little good. Wow. He is very good. Right. So, okay. Um, so comparisons uh, comparisons were made between Loris and Ragvan, right? They each, they're each low lower costed. Uh, creatures. Okay, so you've got Ragavan. You can play at one, the one slot or the two slot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but in your deck building, you'd probably cast him for you. You he would take up the one slot, I would think, right? Yeah, if yeah. you're talking about deck building, yeah, yeah. right? Um, so so the comment was so. Oh yeah, Ragavan. I actually think is good for the format. Forces everyone to play to the board, right? So, so saying that Ragavan forces people to play a certain way, right? Mm-hmm. The next comment was, yeah, Loris homogenized the format by forcing certain ways to answer at main deck. So, to me, my where my mind goes is we're saying Loris is bad because it's forcing a certain play style, but Ragavan's good, but Ragavan, you're also saying forces a certain play style. So that was where my mind initially went, okay? But the downside, which w- which the comment was made, is Luris very much homogenized the format. Yeah. Dex changed to mm-hmm. fit, to be able to fit Luris. Because the value is just too good. Right. So, y- yes, both of these cards are forcing you to be forcing the meta to be playing a certain way. Mm-hmm. So um, I-, I, think, I think the comment... I, I think I think that I think the comments were right were right on honestly. Mm. Um, it's just initially I'm like, well, I thought if you're saying that Luris is bad because it's forcing a certain play style, how can you say Ragavan's good by by that by also forcing a certain play style? Well, it's a difference of more so who, because how I see it, it's like the Luris is changing the deck of the yeah. specific player yes. to where. Sure the Ragavan isn't so much changing the deck of your opponent <laughs> because it's just like, well, I have all these kill spells anyway, yeah. so I just have to take care sure. of it. So sure. that's what I think when he's saying play to the board. It's yes. like, all right, well, I now have to just control yep. the board anyway. Yeah, I agree. So yep. 
And and when it comes to the um, the Luris, unless you unless you stop it on the stack, you don't get a priority of before he takes the bobble <laughs> I know. from the graveyard. I know. So now I it's know. just like, all right, well, now it's a free card. And if they're playing Jund or Rakdos or uh, Red Black of anything, really, yep. um, you then also have access to the Kolagon's command, which gets you back the Luris from the graveyard, mm-hmm. along with one other effect. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, whenever I would see Luris, I'm like, what do you mean this Jun list is only running two Kolagons command or or not even playing it at all or at a one? I'm like, it gets you back your most important card. Play the Kolagons command. Uh, <laughs> so for – are you pulling up Kolagon? I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a one red and black. How do you uh, – now, now I have to figure out how you spell oh, Kolagons. Uh, K-O-L-O. G H A N Kolagons. Got it. Okay. So Kolagons Command is a three mana instant, one a black and a red. Choose two, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Target player discards a card, destroy target artifact. Kolagons Command deals two damage to any target. Yeah, pretty good. The card's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty uh, good. And that's legal. Legal in pretty much every format. Uh, pretty much. Did you say? Did you say that they they discard? Yeah. Uh, Target at, player discards at card. instant speed. At instant speed. So I don't know if you know this. There was a a Grixis control deck that okay. would play. Uh, he was a Sultai commander. Uh, he he sits on like the gold. He sits on like the throne. Uh, I forget his name. Um, I, I have I have the art in my in yeah. My head. They they made a new version of him where mm-hmm. like his jewelry is shiny yeah, and stuff. I, I think he I, has delve as well. I can't remember. Um, all right. So regardless, uh, you're able to pay some mana mm-hmm. into making it to where your opponent picks a uh, a card from your graveyard to put back into your hand. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're able to recycle the Kolagon's command back into your hand, and at their at the end of their draw step, you can play Kolagon's command to make them discard the card that they just drew. And you're playing a control list, so you're you're probably going to have them have zero cards in hand anyway. Yeah, when so. I play control, it's fun because I'm very, very mean like that. Yeah. And that, it's fun to be mean. <laughs> yeah, that's more of a boomer deck yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yep. Um, so the next – so uh, we talked about Lurs, but also Lutri. Lutri is another one that yeah. – so hit this would more so fall under – I think more of a stale metagame, okay, that um, that point, okay. So Lutri was banned in Commander before the before set even released, released yeah. okay, because his companion restrict and it because it's not what the card did. It was an okay, it's an okay <laughs> card. It's just the same effect that yeah. we've seen in everything else, and it's just more expensive. Yeah, for the most part, um, like his effect you normally see in in a two mana value and not yeah. three, but. The his companion text was companion. Each non land card in your starting deck has a different name. That's hard. That's commander. <laughs> commander and brawl. Every single exactly every single deck that's in those formats meets that restriction. So if that's you're weird. in, is it you're gonna run the card mm-hmm. basically? Yeah. And so the decision was made before the set even released. We're banning it in these formats. Because of that reason, mm-hmm. if there's there's literally no downside to you not ru- to you running the card, yeah. none. Red and blue cards are uh, overall pretty good yes. to be copied. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ex- oh, especially since you can just make infinite combos of all right. Well, now I clone my clone effect to then just keep copying clone effects. And, and, it, and then if you have Raul Zarek or Raul something, yeah, when there's, you an, cast, there's an infinite combo yeah, there. Yes. Yeah. And it's just, all right, every time you cast or copy a spell, deal one damage. Yeah. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. But you can't, um, most, since this is a permanent, you won't yeah. be able to copy. That oh, oh, it's, spell. oh, it's, so wait, wait, Lutri is copy what I'm a spell? saying. What I'm saying is you can't – normally you wouldn't be able to copy Lutri. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm saying like play a clone effect and then play Lutri to then clone that copy that co- effect. That copy yeah. effect. Okay, yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so it, and it, wasn't, it wasn't so much it was banned because um, – like it wasn't banned because it was going to be good or anything. Yeah. And 
or it or the fact that it was just going to be in every deck. It was you were guaranteed to see the card. Yeah. Because it was going to be in your companion zone, so you always had access to it. Yeah. It's not like it was going to be one of the 99, mm-hmm. right? That's not it. Yeah. It's just I always have access to this card and I will you will most likely see that card this game. Yeah. That goes more off of the stale metagame and, oh, you're playing it. Oh, there, there's Lutri again. You know, that that type of feeling. Yeah. Which we've all had those feelings, not with yeah. Lutri, but. His with, deck restriction is not a restriction in correct. Commander. Go, same thing with like the Luris thing yeah. you're talking about. Like, yeah. it's not an actual restriction. It's not a bad kind of restriction. Right, 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 right. Where so, Yorian at least makes it to where your deck is less consistent. Right, right, right. So, all right. So the last, the last point that we want to talk about of like why bannings can happen um we've talked about the stale metagame the warping of the metagame this last one i think is also this is mostly going to be more geared toward magic right because it's a game that's been around for almost 30 years now right Mm -hmm. it's to remove quote problematic cards from play um in june june i believe june of 2020 um, Wizards of the Coast released an article entitled Depictions of Racism in Magic. So, and these that cards... escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so these cards that they named in this article, um, they had all been around for quite a long time. Quite a long time. And both, they never were really talked about by Wizards, I don't think. Like publicly before this article that I'm aware yeah, of, I don't believe so. They've been talked about plenty of times, like within the community itself, mm. um, but not by Wizards of the Coast. Um, I'm also I'm trying to remember what was going on in the, in the culture at that time. Um, I'm trying to remember because I remember when this article came out um, and when they banned these cards, but I'm trying to think like if there was a point in culture that like something happened that kind of triggered it. I'm trying to remember. I don't think so. I don't think something happened, but you're if, saying it was June, 2020. Yeah. June, 2020. Um, I've got it right here. June yeah. 10th, June 10th of 2020. Okay. Um, so, um, we'll link the article if you want to go, if you want to go check it out. Um, but so they've, they named one, two, three, four, five, six, there were seven cards that they named. Um, cause I remember when, <laughs> I remember when the article came out, there were so many news outlets, mostly like YouTubers and yeah. like the, um, the normal c- outside of the mainstream media, right? Independent media? Yeah. Independent media. And okay. In- there were plenty of independent outlets that were talking about it, um, and, and their thoughts. So, um, we're, you know, I'm not really interested right now in having the discussion of who's right, who's wrong. This is merely a discussion of an acknowledgement that it happens. And this is a reason that bannings can happen. Mm-hmm. So, and honestly, I think magic is probably one of, one of, not the, but probably one of the only games where this is going to happen in at right now, because it's a game that's been around for almost 30 years. Yeah. Cultures shift, times change. That's a very, that's a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, Culture shift. I, could, I mean, th- I think about myself and how the world was when I was a kid. Mm. Our world, our culture is a is a completely in a completely different place. It was than it was when I was a kid, right? So if you have cards that have been around for that long, you may you have the potential to be to print cards that seem fine when they're printed, and then now they don't seem okay. I'm not saying that's what happened here. Um, because one of these cards definitely is, <laughs> I honestly, I honestly don't understand how, how okay, did this get okay, through? <laughs> so I, do, I, 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 we have to talk about it. So, so the card is invoke prejudice. Oh. Okay. After like looking, I have to pull it up because yeah. I can't even, I, I didn't pull it up for whatever reason. I don't understand how in the world does a card like invoke prejudice? Maybe we shouldn't put it up on screen. (laughs) I'm I'm not going to put it up on screen. Um, If you want to look at it, you can go, you can go look it up yourself. Um, (laughs) So the, the text, we'll read the text. Okay. Whenever an opponent casts a creature spell that doesn't share a color with a creature you control, counter that spell unless that player pays X, where X is, is its mandate value. Now, mm-hmm. if you just had the text by itself, 
that's that's okay. That's not a that's not a terrible effect. Um, I. It's not it, that's fine effect, okay? But the name it, and photo. Exactly. <laughs> it was it was the name of the card, the photo. It was the photo at most. Oh yeah, yeah. It was the and that was all I looked at for the longest time. Yeah. Um when this came out, I just looked I looked at the name, I looked at the photo, I'm like, uh yep. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. But then I read the card. I'm like, wait, what now? <laughs> <laughs> After reading that, I'm like, how does this get through? I mean, this card, this card is, is, there's no, there's no denying it, what it references yeah. to. I'm not going to say it because I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to We'll just say it triggered. begins with a K. Yeah. <laughs> cubed. We'll say K cubed. Yeah. <laughs> how? I mean, there's, there's no, there's, you, you can't explain it away. You can't. There's, uh, there's uh, that's none. another math lesson for you guys. If you do not know math time with Jim, uh, don't say it. <laughs> We're don't not say, gonna it. say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, but just if, if you're curious, look up the card. You'll yeah. see. You'll see the art. Okay. Oh, I, man. We're laughing just be, just based off of the conversation we're having, yeah. not not the card. Like it's <laughs> it's it's very apparent. It's very apparent. I mean, it's funny to me how how did this card get yes. honestly through? Now, now here's the interesting thing. Oh, I've man. also heard in 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 looking this up, okay, in doing the research that I've I've done, that was it the artist? Oh, well, it had to have been, okay. Because how do you how do you draw how do you make art for that card right the yeah. art that was made I mean, but the artist who made the art for this card mm. was and this ter- the term racist gets thrown around so much yeah. it does it gets thrown around so much, but he very much had um, he had those thoughts and ideologies yeah. very very much yeah. that's what I've heard mm-hmm. um, which looking at the art that makes sense. Yeah. Very much makes sense. Now, there's also, you know, we we talk about art, separating the art from the artist, all of those things. There's, there's honestly, there's a lot of things that you can talk about when it comes to this arena, um, in in tabletop gaming and card games, and there's there's a lot that you can talk about, yeah. right? Um, but I I think I think you do need to you you can't have these conversations just from a, a an acknowledgement of why these bannings for example like what we're talking about here of why they happen right but because this is an honest this not honest but this is an actual reason why bans happen in that article they banned uh where's the article here? they banned seven, seven cards, cards. Yeah. they banned seven cards mm-hmm. um there was actually a, a list I was looking for. So you can find the the list of all seven cards on there. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a photo I found on Google Images. There was only one card that was missing inside of the seven, and it was the Invoked Prejudice card. Oh, that the was the artwork. only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so well, because uh, the artwork on that is 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 yeah. so is so. Yeah. Obvious. Yeah. There's no getting around it. The other ones, it wasn't so much the artwork that why they were, uh, yeah. why they said that they were problematic or whatever. Yeah. Um, but the Invoke Pride is 100%, 100%. I think in prison was kind of a part of it, but I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I have to look up that one. Um, in fact, now I'm curious. Yeah. Um, yeah. For for the list I saw, it, it could have been like a little thumbnail someone made or, or they something. Don't even, they don't even show it. Oh no! They don't show it. I'd, I'd have to. Do oh, I just went to like Google Images. Yeah. So the uh, yeah the the list it showed six of the seven cards and the one that wasn't showed was obviously the worst one of all of them. So. Oh, so okay. Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Th- that that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely more so the artwork. Yeah. That's more so the artwork. So again, with the game that's been around for almost thirty years. Something like this is bound to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think you also, I think when you have these conversations personally, I think you do, sh- you should look at intent. Um, uh, and honestly, sometimes with the art, maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't know. Um, but again, I, th- I think, you know, it starts with having a conversation, but uh, in any case. I just want to know, know who put the, the okay for that seriously, card to get sent seriously. through. <laughs> like who did it? Who did that? <laughs> Oh, I man. mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but come on, because man. It's, it's not because we know that um, they don't like look 
we know that they look at these cards and pretty much say, all right, yeah, this is good. Yeah. Because the, it happened with Birds of Paradise. So the mm-hmm. history of that one, it was they first wanted an artwork for Volcanic Island. Oh, yeah, that's right. So so when he made the artwork, it was like a an, an island in the background or a volcano in the background with this bird a lot closer to like the, the camera lens is what we'll say. To, oh, yeah, it was like yeah. the main thing That's in right. the picture. Mm-hmm. So, and then they're like, all right, well, this isn't exactly what we were looking for. The bird's taking up most of the photo. Right. And we want it to most, mostly be around the volcanic island itself. Uh-huh. So then they got different artwork, but they still paid for the Birds of Paradise artwork and right. they turned it into the card that we now know, right. Birds right. of Paradise. Yeah, because because the way, at least the way it works. The way it works that I'm aware of is when they approach the artist, they give them a general concept. They don't have they don't say like exactly what the card yeah. does. Yeah. They normally give them a, a concept of okay, here's what we're thinking, here's what we're thinking and for the name. artwork. And yeah, and a name. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the artist goes from there. Now, is that what happened here? I have no clue. Because again, this was also a yeah. long time ago. Just I'm just going because ba- uh, Birds of Paradise was alpha or beta or one of those right, two. Right. That so nine, if, that if they did it for that guy, yeah, if they did it for that th- guy, they probably did it for the person who made Invoke Prejudice yeah. as well. Yeah. But again, we y- you don't know because that also – who knows? There, are, there could be. <laughs> There's a few people out there that know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, I, again, we're, we're curious, mm-hmm. like very curious because – the big, the big question, the big question is how did this get through? Mm-hmm. Because that, that is a huge glaring. It, it's so obviously glaring that how in the world does something like this yeah. get through? But it's a little crazy. Yeah. All right. All right. So again, I, 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 I want to make this point again. We're not saying any of these things are right or wrong. Um, what we are saying is we're just acknowledging that these things happen. Um, and the, the, these are the um, uh, are, arenas. These are the uh, buckets that they can fall into, right? Like mm-hmm. it's a stale metagame, the meta warping, or to remove to remove a, a quote problematic card from the game for yeah. for whatever reason, right? Um, I think it. I think it's important. I do think it's important to acknowledge um, the reasons because again, you can The only way you can get better. Um, and learn and move forward is by recognizing past mistakes, right? And then correcting them and then moving forward. Mm-hmm. So, all right, moving on. Um, <laughs> so, um, all right. So when talking about bannings, yeah. right, this is where digital digital card games really have an edge over physical card games, right? Um, because we talk about with Luris. Are they going to reprint the card and how long it takes to actually print it? Mm -hmm. They have to make sure they get it right or else there's there's a lot of different ramifications. There's a lot of ramifications that can come up and that can happen. Um, Was the uh, companion reminder text on the card? Yeah. Oh, it was? Okay. Yep. I don't remember. Yep. So that – for the for companion that that's it wasn't that big of a thing because we're just talking about reminder text right mm-hmm. but if it's actual rules text and how it affects the card you need to know what's going on yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. in in your game right which you should anyway right mm-hmm. but like testing 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 the amount of testing that goes into magic and these sets is already insane yeah it already is pretty crazy because they have to get it right mm-hmm. right um but the nice thing with the digital game, and that's why Arena, again, we're still talking about magic here, but that's why Arena is very nice to where they can just change it in an update and yep. they can errata the text right away. Mm-hmm. So you talk about a, you talk about magic and then you talk about a game like um, Legends of Runeterra, which is digital only. So Legends of Runeterra, digital only. If they have, if they have a banning or they need to errata a card, they just – do an update and they're like, all right, well, here's the changes for, mm-hmm. for this month. You know, after looking at the metagame, we've realized, um, this card needs to be nerfed. This card needs to be buffed. Mm-hmm. Um, and those, that happens a lot in digital card games. Same thing with Hearthstone. They do that Correct. quite a bit. Yep. Actually. Hearthstone. Yep. But with a physical game, you can't do that. 
Mm-hmm. You can't just buff or nerf a card. Mm-hmm. With companion, it was they kind of had an out because they were just like, well, let's just instead of changing how this <laughs> one companion worked, we're just going to change the entire mechanic yeah. and how the mechanic worked. Yeah, right. So that was a little easier. And I say easy, like nothing is easy, right? But it is a little easier than than just erratic one card, mm-hmm. right? Um. So the, the other thing that I, that I did want to note, like if you've invested a lot of money in a physical card game um, and then there's a ban that happens, I mean, your investment could lose like half its value. Oh, very more than, well, depending just, on the game. Again, right, yes. Yeah. No, right, 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 yeah. right. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just using that as an example. Yu-Gi-Oh, that stuff drops down to Does it? next to nothing. Really? Yeah. 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 Yeah, cards can be like a hundred dollars, or even like a reprint of some stuff. It could be like a hundred dollars, and then card gets banned down to twenty five cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's it's drastic. Well, it's, it was interesting. So you know, um, it, it could go both ways too, right? Because you look at look at the reason for the banning. So like when the whole uh, that uh, the racism and magic article when that came out and those cards were banned, mm-hmm. I'll. I shouldn't say a lot. One, so Invoke Prejudice, that card, I was looking up the um, price history for that card. I think r- when when it got, at, at the time it got banned, the price was about $250. Mm-hmm. That um, sounds about right. And so af- once it got banned, the price history on MTG Goldfish, it doesn't show it. Um, but I looked it up on eBay, and on eBay it was going for five six hundred. Mm-hmm. So... Same it, with TCG uh, player. They, you can't even find these cards. You can't find the cards. You cannot find the cards. Yeah, they on completely there. took them out of the database. Right. Yep, they took them out of the database. Took them. They they did their best to take them out of circulation. Which I mean, that's what they're trying to do. I I, I get it. I understand why they're trying to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not gonna. It's not gonna. Not stop gonna solve it. it not yeah. gonna stop it. Right. It, that's they're still going to be circulated. <laughs> what they did was cause this card to double in price. Correct. Yeah. Um, so in that case, like these cards were not banned because they were good, right? Th- that mm-hmm. was not the reason for the ban. They were banned because they were bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, in this case, it's, it's very similar to book burning, right? Yeah. And what I mean by that is they were banned because some, someone decided that these are not good, um and and no one should be able to use them or, or whatever. It's it's this it's a similar concept, right? And so what that does people is, also weren't really using these cards though. Right. No, no, <laughs> right, right. But what the effect that it yeah. does yeah. is it causes those prices to skyrocket because they yeah. were banned for they were banned for no reason. They were banned for controversial a reason. reasons. They yeah. were banned for a reason, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's 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 a that's a good way of saying controversial reasons, sure. Um, cause not everybody agreed with it. Right. Yeah. There were some people who were like, well, this is dumb. These should not be banned. It's, it's whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I say it's very similar to book burning. It's, it's a similar concept. I'm not saying that they're equal at all because they're not, yeah. it's, it's, they're, they're different. Um, but there are similarities, right? I can at least recognize that there are similarities. So it caused the price. I only looked up Invoke Prejudice. I did not look up the prices for the other cards. Uh, Crusade is about twenty twenty five bucks right now. What was it before? I don't know. That was really the only one I also okay. looked up. Okay. Um, I would assume it's probably I, on Goldfish. Might yeah, be able to find let me, it. Let me actually look it up yeah. right now. Uh, you said what was it? Uh, Crusade. Crusade or Crusader? Something along those lines. I think it's Crusade. All right, let's look up. Revised edition. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, oh, see, and now it looks different. All right. Oh, so before it got banned, it was at two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> it was at two dollars and fifty cents before it got oh, banned. Oh, it got a ten x. Yeah. Wow. So wow. you, we look at that. These are unintended consequences, obviously. Mm-hmm. These are very much unintended consequences, but it does happen. 
Now right. the demand is so much higher for those carts because the exact because reason. Because they are banned. Yeah. Right? Whether or not you agree with it, you disagree with it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That has nothing to do with it. I, these are now collector's items. Yeah. I also think these are like, it's the exact opposite of what tends to actually happen from a ban yes. list. Yes. Because it's like, all right, normal, well, if it's competitive reasons, the card drops in price. I looked at I looked up Luris today. Yeah. Luris was here and once it got banned, now it's down. Yeah. It, it's down yeah. pretty considerably. It happens to every single card that, right? that it happens to. But these weren't seeing play. And now it's like, all right, well, now we gave them, now they have a reason to ban to these collect, cards. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, collect and these collect cards. And collect them. Right. 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 I, I remember, <laughs> I actually remember watching uh, Tim Pool's video. He he did a video about this whole thing when it happened. Oh. And he was basically like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy all these cards. Yeah. Because now they are collector's items. Yeah. And now I have a reason to collect them. <laughs> right. And obviously, you know, so many people were saying, people were saying so many different things at the time. Yeah. Um, I just remember hearing what he said in particular at yeah. the time. Um. Uh, but that this that's what happens. Like it, it's very much an unintended consequence, and you can say whatever you want. Um, like you agree with it, you disagree with it. Um, sure, there's plenty of people who disagree with it for mm-hmm. for uh, legitimate reasons, but yep. it's still what happens, yeah. right? And so I do think it's important, and you should look at that and mm-hmm. understand. Um, I'm I am all about understanding why these things, why anything happens, right? Um, you know, if if, if I want to look at if I want to look at how I can be kind to someone and um, be empathetic with someone to someone, I first need to understand what they like, what they enjoy, why they are the way that they are, mm-hmm. and so understanding for me, and I think it should be understanding should be high on everyone's priority list of understanding what makes someone tick, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I uh, kind of get off, got off a little off topic there, but um, th- th- it happens. These things happen yeah. very much, obviously unintended. Because like with with that whole article, they didn't intend. For th- you think they? W- you think wizards wanted to make these cards more valuable? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. If it was an NFT, they'd get actually some money from it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Five percent, ten percent, and 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 no. It's go, speaking of that, there's <laughs> no, there is no questioning it. There's definitely companies that do stuff like that. Yeah, obviously there are. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> the next secret layer. <laughs> oh my word! All seven of the band cards. <laughs> With new oh, artwork. Because that's what artwork. they do with secret layers. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, uh, all right. Well, that's what we got for today. That was the, This was very was much a different conversation. Yeah. Um, but let us know what you thought. Um, I, I'm very interested in exploring um, these different topics. Um, but, you know, if you're not – if you don't play these card games and you hear – you hear about these bannings. Um, it's it's good to know why they happen. Um, and I think for pretty much for every card game, um, these are pretty much the three reasons mm-hmm. th- why they happen. If a card gets banned, it can probably fall under one of these reasons. It's due to the metagame, either it being stale or it's broke in the metagame, yeah. or that there's a a cultural issue. I think that's actually a good way of saying it. There's a cultural issue with it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do think, I mean, racism is wrong, uh, clearly and obviously, mm-hmm. but these cards in particular were banned because of racist undertones. Again, in that article, that's what they state, but that's also, uh, that falls very much under these cultural shifts, yeah. cultural phenomena, mm-hmm. what, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, but again, when you have a game that's been around for so long, and again, if if Magic stays around, it's it, if this is a game that's around for 100 years, can you think about what our culture is going to be like in 70 years? Very interested. Because if you have a format like Vintage, uh, there's pro- there would probably be a lot of different formats <laughs> by then. But you looking at the cards that we love and enjoy now, who knows what they're going to be thought about in 70 years? Are there going to be issues with them? Who knows? But the What culture- do you mean you put a cat in an oven? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like culture shift. 
Yeah. Um, and what and what's acceptable here in the U.S. is looked at very differently in other cultures, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's very important to understand understand that and recognize that um, because I think that's very important. And it's very important in order f- to be kind and empathetic is first learning to understand somebody. So I'm going to leave it with that. Um, kindness and empathy are, I think, very much undervalued and underused. Mm-hmm. So please be kind. Be empathetic to everyone. Um, seek to understand them. Uh, you don't agree with them. You don't understand them. Seek to understand. Be kind. Be empathetic. Um, and then, you know, kick your, kick that relationship off on the right foot by being kind and empathetic. And you know what, who knows, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe mm-hmm. you'll learn something that you did not know, uh, before meeting them. So, learn something, make a new friend. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, that's, that is what tabletop is all about. Mm-hmm. That's what, what we are seeking to build here. We are seeking to build a community that is kind and empathetic to one another. Um, I, I very much value, and I, honestly, I hope my, our audience really, they glean that they can, they hear that from us that we try to be kind and empathetic to everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, whether or not you agree with us or you disagree with us, um, I view it, I value kindness and empathy. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, so I think it's very important in tabletop. Um, and I think it's, it is these, those are traits that are very much lacking in, in tabletop. Uh, we, Remember, we had talked an episode. We talked about the toxic communities in tabletop yeah. <laughs> and how they form oh, and how man. they happen. Yeah. Um, but I think of the quote from, I believe it was Alexander de Tocqueville. Um, was it de Tocqueville? But uh, the, it, 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 it may, it, I don't think it actually was de Tocqueville. It might be, it might have been someone else. But um, the, the way that evil triumphs is for good men to do nothing. Um, I can't mm. remember who said that. For some reason, it, I thought I'm thinking it's to Tocqueville, but it might be somebody else. Um, but the, the if we if we don't want there to be evil in the world, right? Then just do nothing, right? You as a good person do nothing. Um, that's how evil. Oh, triumphs. it reminds. I was gonna say it reminds me of. Uh, have you you've seen uh, Boondock Saints? Yes. Okay. It reminds Love me of the, those movies. The, the opening quote where it says, but we have something uh, to fear more than evil men. It's the indecency of good men. Oh, yeah. 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 That, I mean, it's pretty much that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, it was actually interesting. So talking about – we're talking about so many different things here, but that's or okay. the indifference. Did I say yeah, indecency? you said indecency. <laughs> indifference. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew what you meant. I, I knew what you meant. Um, uh, so when we were at the zoo – um, when we had just walked through the door, we saw a, uh, we came upon a child couldn't, couldn't have been three years old, two or three years old, but just wandering and crying, we did not know where the, where the mother or the yeah. father were, the, yeah. where the parents were. Um, and so you see, there's so many people just walking by, mm-hmm. not doing anything. And I'm just like. Me and my wife, we walked, we're like, hey, buddy, where's, who do you belong to? And thankfully, there was someone else who was behind us who said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, it turns out the mother was right there, um, but they weren't oh, like right, just, like, they weren't right off, next yeah. to him. They weren't right next to him, but they were watching. They yeah. were watching. They had an eye on him. But it got me thinking that in crowds like this, there's so many people that mm-hmm. just will walk by and not do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just. It just got me thinking about that. So um, so if I can leave you with one thing today, be kind and be empathetic. <laughs> so with that, with that, we're, we're going to we're gonna wrap it up today. Uh, Jim, where can people uh, where can people find you on the interwebs? Yeah, you guys can find me on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, at JimMorganHNH. You can find me on Instagram at Daniel.G.Campbell and Twitter at underscore DG Campbell. Um, and then lastly, you can find Hobbies and Happiness on just about every social platform, Hobbies and Happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to our website, hobbiesandhappiness.com, that's hobbiesandhappiness.com, you'll find links to just about everything there. Um, and yeah, so thanks everybody for being here. And we will catch you in the next episode. See you, everybody. Take care. Um,